Hey, I'm uh, Jeremy from Touche Amore. I'm currently on tour, so that's why my voice sounds extra bad, but anyone who's ever heard me talk probably isn't surprised by any of this. I'm gonna talk about 11 bands that are maybe underrated or overlooked, past, present, future. So the first band I'm gonna talk about is a band called Acme. They're from uh, Bremen, Germany. They, uh, they put out a discography record in the late 90s on uh, Edison Records. They only put out two EPs. It was like a demo and then a seven inch after that. But you can listen to that today and still hear how wildly influential that band is. The discography is called To Reduce the Choir to One Soloist. Like if you hear that, it sounds very reminiscent of like early Converge, like maybe like When Forever Comes Crashing era. I obviously never got to see this band play, but um, it's a record that always stood out to me. A, probably because they're called Acme and growing up on like Looney Tunes cartoons, you, you're familiar with that word. The record is incredible. And uh, it's not even, on, you can't find it on streaming services or anything like that. I'm sure you can find it on YouTube to, to listen to. Next band I'll talk about is a band I have a close relationship with, been a fan of, I strongly say, a top 10 favorite LA hardcore band of all time, a band called Dangers. They've been around since the early 2000s. Uh, the vocalist Al Brown is pretty much the only original member. Dangers is kind of Al Brown. He's an outspoken person. Uh, he's been known to rub people maybe the wrong way with how outspoken he is, especially in his lyrics. That's something that I've always appreciated. They've put out, you know, I think it's three LPs since them being together since like the early 2000s, but every time they put something out, it's, it's always an extremely special uh, situation. Their first record, uh, Anger, uh, is probably still my favorite thing they've done. I've been lucky enough to put out a seven inch for them. Um, God, at this point, probably like seven or eight years ago. It's melodic, it's pissed, it's honest. Uh, I, I love them with such a passion. So um, yeah, Dangerous, incredible band. Next band I'm gonna talk about is a band called No Reply. They were a LA hardcore band from the 90s. The singer's Dave Weinberg, who went on to front the band Suicide File out of Boston. They only had a demo and two seven inches. They had a self-titled seven inch and uh, a split with another great hardcore band, Lost a Time, called Life's Halt. But it's super good, super angsty. Both seven inches came out on Indecision Records. The split with Life's Halt is a fun thing for any vinyl collector because they've made like several different seven inch covers for it for like different tours or record release shows or whatever. There's one with like John F. Kennedy being shot, like a Misfits cover, all sorts of stuff. You could find them online. No Reply is super good, really angsty, good, just fast. Um, good punk hardcore. The next one in line, a Death Wish Inc. release of the early 2000s, a one and done, a band called The Power and the Glory. They put out a record called Call Me Armageddon. And it's just an unbelievably, wildly heavy, uh, pissed, um, very Converge-esque band. They actually used to be called Downpour. They switched their name over to Power and the Glory. Uh, you look at the artwork for it, it's very Jake Bannon. He did the he did the record, of course. I think if anyone is a Converge fan out there, especially if that mid-2000s era Converge, like kind of No Heroes era, I think they, they would really appreciate that Power and the Glory record. Next band I'm gonna talk about is a current band. They're called Praise. They're from Baltimore. They've been a band since like 2010. They first did some seven inches on React. All their stuff so far has come out on React. But they did two seven inches and an LP, which are all really good. But they put out an EP a couple years ago called Leave It All Behind, which like completely blew me away. They have D-Fang, uh, um, who plays drums in Turnstile, playing drums in that band. They just announced a new record, and I'm so, so, so excited to hear what it's gonna sound like. A lot of bands try to capture the like very DC, style like Revolution Summer era of um, Discord Records. They're very reminiscent of like Rites of Spring and I think they're doing it the best. So I'm really excited about what they're gonna do. So if you haven't checked out Praise, definitely do that. Not quite a hardcore band, but it's members of hardcore bands that did it. So I'm gonna cheat the system up a little bit. They're called Renee Hartfelt. They put out one LP called Death of a Ghost. In like 2007, the members of the band Count Me Out. It's just so 
so wildly ahead of its time with like the sort of grunge resurgence that we that we saw in the last you know 15 years or so or 10 years i mean actually but yeah it's like very very 90s alt style band could be compared to like a, a quicksand or something like that 6131 records put out a discography for them i think for record store day maybe last year they're so good the record still sounds really like it could have been recorded yesterday renee hartfelt death of, death of a ghost is unbelievable um if you like that very like 90s throwback sound that bands like maybe super heaven or basement bands like that kind of brought back uh, I would really recommend checking out Renee Hartfelt and giving them some love. I think a lot of people, when they discover the screamo genre, they'll probably first find Seisha, Page 99, and Orchid. So Ritual Mess is a lot of the key members that played in Orchid. <laughs> Jeff Garlock, Jason Green, the vocalist of Orchid, and Will Killingsworth, the guitar player. If you long for a band that sounds like Orchid, Ritual Mess kind of sounds like where Orchid would have gone. They put out one seven inch and one LP. I think the LP was like 2014 or something like that, but it was a one and done kind of, uh, kind of band. I don't know how many shows they really played. They definitely never came to the West Coast. If you're a fan of the screamo genre and you didn't, maybe were even not aware of that Ritual Mess record, you should check it out because it's, it's really, really good. Another current band I want to talk about that I want very badly to be the biggest band in the entire world is a band called Spiritual Cramp. They're from California. They've put out a series of seven inches. They put out a collection of a lot of their EPs uh, on an LP. They're just thriving. And every time I see them, um, my mind is just blown. They're very reminiscent of like The Clash and like um, Modern English, like that sort of really good, like sort of 80s punk stuff. It's got like some dub influence in it. It's so good. It's so unbelievably good. There's no reason that they're, they shouldn't be the biggest band in the entire world. If you haven't checked out Spiritual Cramp, I just, I keep saying it, but I can't recommend it enough. Next band I'm gonna be very biased on because they just left our tour. Uh, they're from Nashville, they're called Third Face. They put out a record uh, called Do It With A Smile last year. It was one of my favorite records of the year. Now that I've got a chance to see them live, I have the 100% stamp of approval. They are so fucking good. Very heavy, very spastic, weird time signatures, unbelievably pissed. If you're a fan of, I keep bringing up bands like Converge, but if you're a fan of Converge, um, they're reminiscent to me of very like the mid 2000s era Converge. One of the most impressive bands I've seen live in a really long time. If you're a fan of that style of like heavy, 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 aggressive hardcore, um, definitely listen to Third Face. I'm so excited to see what they do next. All right, next band I want to talk about is a band from Japan. They're called Total Fury. I don't believe they're banned anymore, but they were around since the, the 90s. They have a record called 13 Songs, which is on uh, Gloom. They put us out a split with like The Oath on a Youth Attack. They have a lot of split seven inches. If you want to hear a band that's like the closest to sounding like genuinely minor threat, but from Japan, listen to Total Fury. They're fucking sick. Last band I'm going to talk about is a band called Will Haven. They're from Sacramento, California. The first LP I ever heard from them was called El Diablo. Which is interesting, it came out on Revelation Records, where if you hear them, it doesn't really sound like a lot of rev bands. I found out about them because of their connection to bands like Deftones and Far. Every song on El Diablo is just like, it just makes you want to stomp the ground. It's just like consistent, just like, hard head banging like it's so pissed it all kind of sounds like the same song but in the best way possible if you haven't ever heard will haven i would recommend starting with el diablo i believe there's still a band i know they've recorded records with sean lopez who played guitar in far he's also a member of the band crosses with chino yeah i really stand by the record el diablo and i think that it's an incredibly timeless record that you could definitely fall in love with today if uh, you're a fan of that style of like really stompy, aggressive, distorted vocals, hardcore. I don't know if there's any other bands that really sound like them. I think it's worth checking out. All right, those are my suggestions. Those are my recommendations. Maybe leave some of yours in the comments. I'd be curious to see what you're into. Maybe I'll find out some stuff that I should hear as well.